Yes, first of all, I want to say it's great to be back down here in Four Golf Chester, not been here for quite some time. But why are we here? That's the big question. Have I made a big mistake? You see, I've already done two videos this year, which have, uh, well, they've been about my favorite product of 2022. And in each of those videos, I've had plenty of comments from you suggesting that I'm missing out on one key product that I'd failed to test and maybe a fool to have ignored. Right, okay, so before I reveal what that product is, I'd like to know from you, is there any particular brand of golf product out there, one manufacturer, that you never really seem to fully get on with their product? Because for whatever reason it is, whenever I test one particular brand, they never do well for me, but they seem to do so, so well for many others. Maybe I've got an issue. You see, in recent years, one brand has released product that's been really, really favorable amongst the masses. And I don't know whether it's been favorable because it's come in at a very sort of, uh, well, a very favorable price point. So are people being misguided with their kind of, um, their trust in this brand, their, their, um, their belief at how good their product is, purely driven by just how low the cost of it has become compared to others out there. And despite testing products well for uh, quite a few years now on the channel, I can almost kind of like, uh, let me just hit this one. It's a decent sound, isn't it? I can almost well embarrassingly admit that one of these products from this brand, well, they've never made it into my own golf bag. Now, that's not to say I don't like the brand or the products that they've made because we've done some very, very favorable reviews. Uh, but like I said, for whatever reason, they've never really been top of the pile in terms of performance for me. That brand is Cobra. And like I said, I know that many of you out there just love this product. Um, the driver in particular has been so, so favorable in terms of its, uh, well, its performance, its price point, the way it looks. It ticks so many boxes. So why is it that I struggle to get on with the product? And today's video, we look at another product from Cobra, which has been massively favorable in the comments section below in the recent videos that I've done. I'm just hoping I like it this time. So my two products that I highlighted as being my favorites of 2022, well, they were both hybrids. And many of you in that comment section on both videos suggest I should be looking at the new Cobra LTD Limited, whatever it's supposed to be, um, equivalent hybrid. So that's what we're gonna do today. I finally got my hands on one. I'm gonna test the four hybrid out. I'm gonna give you my opinion on how it looks how it performs, and hopefully, finally, we get a product that I really, really like from Cobra, and we'll consider putting it in the bag. Right, I've hit a few balls already. Let's hit one on camera again, see if we can get some uh, immediate feedback. As you can hear, it's a really good, solid strike. Great sound from the balls I've hit so far. That's one key thing that I do like, the way it sounds, the way it feels. But there's some other elements that, yet again, I'm not so sure about. Now, in any review, we've got to talk about the way a product looks. It's kind of, it's a given in a review, but it's almost, it's so subjective. Is it really worth me talking about it? But I'll do it anyway. I like what Cobra have done. Let's go from the crown, first of all. They've gone back to this kind of uh, matte black finish. Uh, there's some uh, detail on the very outside of the, um, of the club face, or the, the club crown, rather. It's got the Cobra logo to align the ball. It's a nice looking club. It kind of sits in the kind of uh, larger size, I would say, in terms of hybrid profiles right now. And from a shelf appeal point of view, I think, again, Cobra have done a great, great job in recent years in making these clubs look very appealing. Um, looks like a quality build. We've got some weight right at the very back there, which is gonna suggest that it's gonna be CG at back, high launching, easy to use club. Let's see. Now, the one thing I have noticed in recent years is that, well, Cobra came into the marketplace with that new driver a few years back at kind of 349, and that was a thing that was a massive appeal because at that point, drivers were kind of in around 450. They came in with a product that literally made it very much more affordable and was, like I said, very appealing. I've noticed that sort of crept up a li little bit um, in recent years, certainly on the driver releases, and I had a quick look at this um, hybrid. This is priced at 199 And again, that's kind of getting back up there. I mean, 
putting some prices up again, which I did in, uh, in an earlier video uh, last week, I'll put the comparison products from the major brands. It's right up there now. It's kind of, okay, you save a little bit of money, but it's priced itself back into that kind of higher marketplace. Now, maybe that was the sort of plan all along from Cobra, come in, pitch something in at a little lower price point, gain some market share and some favorability from consumers, and then creep it back up a little bit. But certainly for me, um, one of the big draws was that very favorable price point. My fear is they've just lost that a little bit. Bit of a pull. Now, one thing that I can tell you in terms of performance is that oddly, I struggle a little bit in terms of the expected launch anyway. Like I said, with that CG weight at the back, I'm expecting to see some real high launching balls here. Don't forget, this is the four hybrid. 21 degrees in terms of loft. I've got a recoil shaft in. Everything is very much sort of familiar with what I'd be comfortable with. And I'm not seeing a ball flight quite what I would expect to see. Again, just that lower ball flight. And again, could be appealing for, uh, you know, a certain type of golf course and a certain type of player. But for me, this club is aimed at the kind of mass market. The big thing about hybrids that I rant on about is just how easy they are in terms to launch the ball and for me i just not getting that out of this sort of shaft head combination so maybe we've got the wrong shaft in place but like i said i reviewed a product with the recoil in last week for hybrid and uh that's a nice strike it sounds good but again it's not a ball fight that uh, if i was playing lynx golf would quite actually like but like i said nothing like what i would have expected to see so i don't know what it's doing on in terms of across the board in terms of the metrics on the uh, TrackMan, but in terms of launch angle, I already know it's very much different than I would have expected. Right, okay, so a quick break because I've hit quite a lot of balls and in many ways, I've hit quite a lot of balls more than I would normally to sort of give this a fair old crack at a whip because like I said, you wonder sort of, you know, how much of it is down to, uh, again, my performance here, but there's a lot of variables in this. Just on that launch angle, it's launching on average at 12.1 and the highest launching ball that I got in all the shots that I hit was only 15.5 degrees but like I said the average was certainly that sort of uh, well as it says 12 degrees and that surprised me a lot uh, spin was 4,000 revs peak height of 66 um, a carry distance of 185 on average which again 185 to 190 I'd expect to get kind of like in most hybrids that I've played, I will say that, you know, when I referred back to these, my favorite products of 2022, one of the surprising things was, was that I seen a few models of hybrids where they had a lot of loft on, but were carrying a lot further than I'd expected. So they become a lot hotter in terms of the face. So that sort of four hybrid was edging into that 200 plus category in terms of the distance I was getting with other products. So again, not massively fast off the face. And uh, at this point, Obviously, I'm concerned about being negative about another Cobra product. People ask me about dispersion charts, which is always the interesting one. Why haven't you put the dispersion chart up when we forget to do so? Well, I'll remember to do it today. Because what you'll see there is a group of balls down the middle, maybe five, six, um, even the two down the left, they're okay. Now, arguably, what you're seeing in terms of the graphic uh, is a fairway. And uh, we'd have maybe just leaked two or three out to the right-hand side into the rough. But... What surprised me again was that most of the kind of um, user-friendly um, hybrids, fairways, drivers even, for the masses are draw bias, so to help that anti-slice. And what I found with this again was that it was a real problem for me in not leaking balls out to the right. Um, so I almost had to work a little bit to try and get those balls or stop those ones drifting out, as you can see, uh, quite a lot wider than I'd expect to be. And for a dispersion chart with hybrid in hand to be so sort of, um, well, off centre, that again is a little bit worrying. So unfortunately for me, again, it doesn't look as though I'm massively positive about a Cobra product. So whilst I'm not massively favourable, I also don't want to be truly negative about a product that clearly uh, works for the masses. It just doesn't work for me. Um, and when I say doesn't work, it just by would not be 
top of the list or anywhere near it in terms of what I've tried this year in terms of hybrid. I was quite surprised by the performance. If you go back to that dry ball data again, the variables were significant. If you look at the kind of peak height, the ball flight was so, so different and uh, no consistency in there for me. Now, arguably, like I said, if we went through a bit of a longer process, I tried two or three shafts here this morning, maybe we could dial something in that performed just a little bit better and more consistently in a, in a, in a longer uh, fitting session. But what I would say is, as always, this is one person's effort, response, review, whatever you want to call these things, um, of that product. I would much prefer if you, as a, uh, a group of golfers who've tried this product, would give the feedback down below. So I'd happily be, uh, you know, point me in the right direction, tell me where it went right for you and why it didn't work quite right for me. Because uh, my idea is I never like coming onto a channel, even though, um, the idea is to give an honest assessment. I don't like to be negative about a product. And I'm sure, like I said, there's plenty of you out there that can stick some comments down below that can give some positivity and uh, prove me otherwise wrong. Anyway, as ever, uh, I just try and give it, feed it back as it is. Hope you enjoyed that video. Thank you for watching. Great to be back down here at 4Golf. And uh, I'll see you all very soon.